for Audrey to see your sketch, but um, but cool. Okay, so um, this is Watch Me Work. I'm SLP. We're here. It's a, uh, geez, what day is it? Anybody? It's Wednesday, April eighth. Wednesday, April eighth. Wednesday, April eighth. Thanks. Um, uh, has anybody, is anybody new to watch me work or has, is everybody, does everybody know what we're doing? You're new to watch me work. Okay. Some people are new. Okay. I'm going to really fast tell you what we do. So you'll know what we do and you'll know what we don't do. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, I'm Susan Lloyd Parks. I've been doing watch me work for, uh, 11 years, mostly in the lobby of the public theater and at other uh, places all around the world. We do it live mostly um, with the live audience in the lobby of the public theater. Um, the public theater, big up and thank you to them for making it possible for all these years. Recently, a couple of years ago, uh, Howl Round came on and has been helping us live stream. And during this coronavirus thing, uh, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do it five days a week? And so here we are. So thank you to Howl Round and thank you to the public theater for helping this happened in such a glorious and expansive way involving hundreds and hundreds of people um, five days a week. So it's very cool. Okay, so Watch Me Work is a play. It's a show and we create it together. In the first 20 minutes of the show we do, we create uh, the dialogue, uh, the action together, sorry, um, by creating the action together. That's my timer here. We work, work on our work um relatively silently uh, for 20 minutes and then after that in the time remaining about 40 minutes sometimes we have time to go over uh, i take questions from you about your creative process so watch me work the me in the title is you i take questions from you about your creative process so i'm not going to sit here and talk about my work i'm going to talk about your work um because it's so fun. And you know, you know, we're we're your squad here, gathered here. We're here to encourage you and and help you uh, start working, get working, keep working, enjoy your work, all those good things. So um, and Audrey is gonna help us tell us some things. Yeah. Yeah, Audrey's gonna tell us some things. Thanks, Audrey. Hey. Um so if you want to ask a question during the questions portion and you're inside of the Zoom, what you need to do is click raise your hand. There should be a participant tab at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop, likely at the top if you're on an iPad, as in my experience. Um, and I'll see a little blue hand pop up on your face and I will call on you and uh, unmute you when it's time to speak. Um, if you are watching the stream on HowlRound.tv, uh, we will also accept questions via social media, the public social media channels, um, our Instagram and our Twitter. Um, we will also accept questions at, at the Watch Me Work Twitter, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Uh, and that's, that's all. Bah. Great, awesome sauce. So um, we're gonna start with uh, 20 minutes of work, any kind of work you want. And then we'll do a lot of talking about your work and your creative process. Let us begin.
Ding, 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 ding. Yes. All right. All right. So that was the um, that was the action part of the show, and now we're going to do the dialogue part where you all will um, ask me questions about your creative process and your work. Anybody got a question? Do you know how to ask questions? You do. Someone knows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got Nancy. I'm going to unmute you, Nancy. Go for it. Hi. Can, uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, but we yeah. can't see you. You're uh, mysterious. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, Is it all right? Oh, it's, oh, a new com- it's, it's a fine. new computer and I'm, uh, thanks. Um, so I have two questions and I can always ask an- another time. I've been coming on a lot. and Thank you so much. Um, I have a political, I have an incident that's part of my uh, life map, something that happened to me that I that is very political that can be expounded upon. And it's a metaphor for a lots of kind of feminist issues. Um, and I don't want to be polemic. And I don't know, I, I'm thinking of a play and I don't, I don't know how to use, use it. And and build the build um, build a story around this very serious. It's almost I mean it's just it's kind of symbolically beautiful type of awful thing. And how to tell the story? I was thinking, do I just write a story and then put that in as an aspect of a character's life, or is it their pursuit? Could it be the pursuit for some kind of social justice? Am I making sense? Um, yeah, uh, yes, you are without, uh, you know, we don't need to sort of get into the specifics of the event since it's something that's personal to you, correct? It's something that happened to you. Well, it's some, it's something, it's somebody that I was, uh, uh, that I grew up around. It's, it happened to her and to a lot of other women like her. Oh, Oh, okay. Okay. So it's right. So something happened to somebody and you want to. Um, sort of, uh, it, it's, it seems to be wanting to be the centerpiece of something that you're writing, probably a play. Is that correct? Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, you could, I mean, you could have the, the, the action, the thing, the incident right in the play as part of the main action of the play. I don't think, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of confused as to what the, Okay, well, the incident, it, it, it's an incident, um, it has to do with somebody that I was raised by, just to, and without getting too specific. Sure, sure, so, sure. but sh- what, who she was, was not so different from other, other people. She, her, her, her story. And obviously there was an effect on me being, you know, an artist and sensitive. And so I can't, I don't want to tell a childhood story except by maybe a flashback but it's, it's, it's. It, so, so, just, so just say you have a, you have a character that you were raised by who was um, as a, uh, sold into slavery. Okay. I'm just making shit up right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this person, you, the, 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 the writer was raised by was sold into slavery and raised her. And now she wants to write a, a, a play involving what happened to this care, this person in her life. Right. Mm-hmm. You could very mm-hmm. much, you could very effectively, I think, use the incident of someone being sold into slavery as a, a centerpiece. Of, that's that's what's happening in your play. That could be something that's happening to the character. What I'm saying is, you're allowed to do that. I know, but it's um, that happened a very long time ago, and uh, I mean, it, I. Uh, Huh. I'm just using that as an example of yeah, I see. something to happen. You know, yeah, it's I something see. that the, what happened to the character in question could easily be happening to one of the characters in your play. Yes, it could. You could write a play about something that happened and had a profound effect on somebody. That could be the stuff of the uh, the, the action of the play. Right. So the the reflect the the character the present day character reflects on this. Or you could Every so often, or you could set it in the past and have it happen. You know, say it happened in the '60s or the '50s or the '20s. Yeah. I don't know, you know, 
Um, and you could have it, you could set the play in the 20s or the 60s or the 50s or the whatever. Sure, mm, you can have oh. it ha yeah, you can have it happen, actually happening, not as a flashback, but as something right. that's actually happening. That's interesting because I was getting very stuck on this idea of a journalist going to research something and why was she so interested in this aspect of injustice and of course it because it was something that she witnessed growing up and happening to other you know people and I thought oh that's so a journalist looking back I like the idea of going back there I don't know if I could stay there the whole time if my I don't know um, but that's interesting to because uh, it's a very, I've never seen these characters before, you know, it'd be right. kind of fun. It would make it more fun for me because I make documentaries oh, and cool. I'm like, oh, I don't really want, yeah, I want it to be, I want it to feel very theatrical. Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Give it a try. Give it a try and, you know, sort of start fleshing out the characters and the action and, and then check back in and, and tell us how you're doing. I will. Thank you. Okay. I have to, before we go, uh, Audrey, I mean, before we go on to the next person, Audrey, I have to give a shout out to someone I'm seeing on my screen, Sten Eriki. Sten, St my friend from a hundred years ago in London. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's great to see you. I have not seen this guy in like a thousand years. God bless you and your family. It is a joy to see you. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, there, there are many things that are difficult about these times, but uh, a great thing is that, um, we get to see each other and I so many of you I've never seen and Stan I haven't seen you in in like 80 years so so okay. hi okay well, we'll, we'll talk later okay okay we got to get emails okay okay um, anyway, uh, Audrey, it's our next question <laughs> back was, to work back to work that's so cool I that's so cool um all right our next question um is going to be from Jean Jean are you Jean oh. yeah Jean. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much. Hi, Jean. Um, and wow, um, Susan, I'm such a huge fan, and this is an honor. And uh, I have to say, were it not for COVID-19, I would not have taken part. So it's crazy. But um, so my question is, I'm well into uh, a, a draft of a play. It's been many drafts, and I've done workshops and readings. And um, each time I've been getting very good notes and um, I'm working with the director and she gave me very detailed notes and everything sort of feels like it's going in a good direction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering um, when you feel like it can tip over into, I mean, I still feel like it's the play that I want to be writing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I continue to rewrite and continue to rewrite. I guess my question is, do you do a million drafts and do you let yourself go off into a lot of different directions or do you stay in the direction that you're going with with the play? Or do you do mix it up and do a little bit of both? And I hope this question makes sense. No, it, it, complete, it completely makes sense. Uh, Julian, Christopher, did you have a question like that? Was Am I having deja vu? Did we talk about something like this? Maybe, nod, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, so Jean, is it Jean or Jeannie? Jeannie, Jeannie. Jeannie, Jeannie. yeah, Jeannie. It's really, um, it's great that you have, you've written a play, you know, and you, you've written a beautiful play. You're having this awesome workshop. You're getting feedback from probably smart people who want you to succeed, right? And want your play to succeed. That's all good, 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 good. And sometimes in those situations, we do have the feeling like, eh, is this the play that I'm writing? You know what I mean? Or have I gone off into, a, into another weird direction? Um, to answer your question about do I do a lot of drafts, I do a lot of drafts, but I don't really show my play, I don't workshop my plays a lot in the traditional sense, like hop or, you know, go to a theater, get lots of feedback, and then go to another situation, get lots of feedback. I don't really do that. I sort of do, or I, I, I don't do it that way. I do workshops in my, you know, in my head. 
So I'm giving myself feedback or I might give it to one close trusted dramaturg producer person and get feedback from them but I don't open it up too much because mm -hmm. sometimes for me when I open it up it gets hard to you know it's like oh 20 different ideas right um so if you're feeling like it's okay to try different things but I would it, it have, do you feel like you've opened it up too much to people um well, I feel like in, in my situation as, you know, somebody who's trying to get um, a play produced that, you know, I kind of have to take the opportunities that come to me. And most of those opportunities come with a built-in, we're going to give you feedback. And so sometimes it's easy to switch it off, but other times like my body hurts. <laughs> If that makes I mean, sense. Yeah, are you saying your body hurts because the feedback is does not relate? and not it just doesn't it's just like not not understood they're not understanding what I'm doing or okay. wanting something else that you know Okay. Well that's very good then. So your your what Hemingway called your built-in shockproof shit detector is working. Um it usually usually it sounds like it's working it sounds okay. Jeannie. it sounds like it's working if people are giving you notes and you're like oh those feel good and then people are giving you notes and you're like uh, 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 then it is your 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 sensors are working okay. right which is great which means that you can probably feel fairly comfortable in well number one when you're taking notes when, when they give you notes what are you doing when they're talking to you or sometimes at you what are you physically doing um I'm usually writing them down. Great. Um, and if there's a note that just doesn't ring ring true or helpful, I, the, the writing stops. There's a flower. <laughs> right, 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 right. I would say, oh, are, are, and are you in, in uh, are you visible to them? Are you like yeah, in yeah, their presence yeah, or, or yeah. in their virtual presence? Yeah, yeah, Great. Yeah, yeah. I would suggest write it all down. Mm -hmm. Keep, give yourself an activity. You can't see my hand, you know, you know, there you are with your notebook and they're giving you notes and you're writing them down. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means that physically, that you're, you're really, and you know, oh, I don't like that note, but I'm writing it down anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that note, I'm writing it down. Okay, to give yourself something to do while you're taking their notes and then you sleep on it, you think on it, you reflect on it and circle the ones that work and just draw lines through the things, the thing, the notes you think are stupid. Okay. And it's great. It's it's a wonderful opportunity to have a workshop, to open yourself up. But just remember to just be mindful. Just be mindful. It's okay that you're trying different things. That play might have to try lots of different avenues. Um, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're going down the wrong road just because you choose a different road from the road you started out but do check in with yourself as much as you can. Does that make any sense? That's like yeah, a big yeah. question, but, but yeah. just keep checking in with yourself. Don't do a note right away. You know, somebody yeah. says, here's a note. Give me a rewrite tomorrow. Whoa, yeah. slow it yeah. down, yeah. slow it down. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Jamie. All right, um, up next, we have Sina. Go ahead. Hey, thank you. Hey. Um, so, uh, Susie Laurie, I had a question about um, kind of like finding inspiration when we're feeling blocked. Uh, uh -huh. the, thank you. The, the play I'm working on, um, I, I started uh, with like writing samples for, for a festival to get a reading. Okay. Um, and it was like two scenes I'd written. And a director from the festival uh, like reached out to me and we had like coffee and talked about it and stuff. And she like, Said at the time that, um, which was a while ago, that uh, I should read uh, all my sons, or sorry, death of, death of the salesman, because like it's not like I'm not trying to compare my play to that, but like thematically, it, like deals with like uh, business and fathers and sons and like the American dream and stuff. Um, and since then, I've been like writing bits and pieces of it and uh, feeling like feeling like I'm writing from like the heart of the thing and from like what people want. Uh, and now I'm, I'm not like blocked, but I do feel like I'm like writing to, to fill pages maybe. And, and that it's, it's getting away from like, it doesn't feel like I'm writing from the heart of the thing, but like kind of more uh, peripherally, I guess. And I'm wondering if that's, 
if like going back and reading a play that like might be similar is something you would think is is useful to kind of reinvigorate myself i guess so so you, did you read this which is the death of a salesman or father or uh, death, all my sons? death of a salesman sorry okay okay oh no 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 it's okay so did you so they said you, they suggested read death of a salesman you went back and read death of a salesman no i oh. i probably will at some time i'm in acting school i'm in a grad acting program but right. i've tried to read it before and like i the memory play thing like i i just it's a little much for me ah. Ouch. yeah i know but it's a, <laughs> it, i mean it's a, it's a great it's a great play so your right. play doesn't have that element in it though no it's very linear in terms of time uh-huh 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 uh -huh. there's there are time there, there there's a time skip um sure sure but it's like linear sure 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 sure, sure. <laughs> so so now you're writing along and you're writing to fill pages do you know do you have an outline um i i i suppose i do but it's I'm not looking up in the sky is it up there <laughs> <laughs> um it, it kind of is because it's not it's not scene to scene it's 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 three acts is what i've okay Okay. See, the other thing is I've kind of set myself with a three act thing and I'm wondering if that's actually becoming a little restrictive. Um, but it's three acts and, and I did that because it was kind of like the arc of like the main character, like coming home, um, uh, loss of the, the, the patriarch dies and, and him having to like kind of take a, a role, his role in the family. Um, right. And okay. Okay. Uh, and okay. That's as outlined as I have it. And, and I guess there is for some scenes, I have things where I'm like, okay, this, by the end of this scene, I think this needs to happen to get me to the next scene. You don't like outlines? Yeah, it feels like math. You don't like math? <laughs> um, not really, no. Why not? <laughs> you don't like counting? You don't like, I mean, math is, you know, ones yeah, and I, zeros, here we are. I guess. I what did math, because yeah. you had a bad experience with math. Oh, okay. So I have, I have a bad experience with outlining. Um, I, I think oh, maybe, oh, yeah, because I've done it before. Uh, oh, I, I think maybe because it, it's I start feeling like feeling like uh, it restricts the possibility of like what could happen if I just sit people down in a room and know what what they're what they're getting at, like what's like the event kind of um, right, right, right. letting right, things right. play out. Right, right, right. Yeah. This is a tough question. Maybe it's not answered. No, no, it's it, it's it's actually it's I, I might might be tough for you. It's kind of easy for me. Um, <laughs> tr try outlining again. Okay. Try it. Yeah. Try just you know. I mean, look. If you if you outlining meaning you don't have to use Roman numerals, right? You don't mm -hmm. have to like do a detailed outline where every beat is articulated, right? But if you were if you were trying it the way you're trying it, like let me just see what happens, and you hit a wall, right? And you're having difficulty. You could switch it up and try something. Try a, a tried and tested tool. I mean, if I said, "Hey, you're building a doghouse, and look, uh, what are you using to hammer that nail?" And well, I'm using a highlighter because I had a heart. I had a lousy experience with a hammer once. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it could be a hard question, or maybe go back to trying the hammer again, and maybe try a different technique. So maybe outlining for you means walking around your beautiful yard and where are you virginia i forget yeah, virginia, you? Virginia, virginia, yeah. virginia okay so you're walking around your yard and you're saying okay scene one is this and then scene two is that and then see maybe you're dancing it out maybe you're maybe you're just dancing around your yard telling yourself the story maybe that's outlining you see what i mean outlining is just a a, a, a a, a word like god you know what i'm saying it's a word that we use that that means a lot of things okay it's not just the guy with the white beard on the, what do you call it, roof of the dome or the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, right? That would be so fucking boring. Excuse my language. <laughs> Outlining is like, it's just a roadmap you're making for yourself, right? It's just if you've ever gone spelunking, caving, and diving down into the Earth's center, you have a, a, an, a often a, a yellow rope. I've done this before. You have a yellow rope that we hold on to, right? Mm. And we, because then we know kind of, how to get to the center, the place where we're going, and we know how to get out. So it's just a tool. It's like shoes. It's like 
you know, Kleenex. It's like, it's like your face mask. I don't want to wear a face mask. Fuck, put on your fucking face mask. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, try it. Right. Just expand your ideas of outlining. Have sure. fun with it. Because ultimately, when, you, when we watch your play, Senate, you're going to be telling us a story. Mm. Right? So practice telling us your story. Mm, okay. Okay? And just like, I don't know, have you ever, like, been in a relationship or anything? Yeah. Okay, great. So just, <laughs> you've been in a relationship. It doesn't necessarily, like, cut off all the possibilities of cool things happening, right? Just because you've chosen an SO, right? A significant sure. other. Sometimes cho making a choice actually expands the possibilities of wonderful things because we can relax. We're not on Tinder every night, like who's gonna uh, swipe left, <laughs> right? We're we're actually chilling with somebody and we're in quarantine with a with a close friend. Mm. I don't know. I went way off the path here. No, that that's just, really that's actually really helpful. All that imagery. Um, yeah. Try I mean, out. Try, yeah. Go ahead. I guess my one question is, I mean, you said like, imagine have fun with it. So I, mm -hmm. I, I want to ask like, so does out, can outlining be as simple as like, as like you said, this is what this scene is like, like a one sentence. This is what happens in this scene. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? Outlining can be that. Okay. Outlining, you can get yourself some really tiny cards. Look, here's my, my census card. Okay. I got to fill it out, but <laughs> you can, but you can fold, you know, it can be really small or even smaller. Look. It can be this small. These can be your cards or even smaller, you know, there. Th your scene can fit on in this scene, blah, 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 blah. That's all you get to write. Ah, next card, you know, right? It's going to be this size, right? So, yeah, you know, I got to fill that out. Uh, but um, anyway, do you see what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. One sentence outline. Sure, that's great. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome so much. Thank you, thank you. As you can tell, I love outlining, guys. Yeah, I love, I'm into outlining. <laughs> ah, outlines are great. Um, all right, Jada, you are up next. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Miss Parks. How are you? You can't hear me? I can hear you. I, I mute myself while you're talking. It's oh, oh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I have like a little beginner's question. Uh, I'm an actress and uh, I, I'm having, I'm, uh, I'm a beginner writer. Um, I study acting for the last couple of years. I'm a um, graduate of HB and Esper Studios. And I could never find anything that I wanted to do in regards of like monologues or just doing, doing doing roles. So these characters just kept coming inside of me, like just living and breathing in me. And I'm like, dude, leave me alone. I'm an actress. I don't want to write, but literally constantly keep niching at me. So I started writing my own um, monologues and um, for myself and very good it's coming out naturally and i just have so many experiences that i want to put down on paper what suggestion would you have for me in regards to um just finding a program or school or some training some formal training in regards of like structure and art because i definitely don't have an issue with writing but i just think that just to feel totally secure to say this is mine to stand by the structure of it is 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 in alignment with what writing is. Sure, sure, sure. Um, did you understand? I know it was a lie. I was a little nervous because no, I, no, I didn't think you, I literally did not think you was going to call on me. So I was just chilling. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was like, maybe I'll act it tomorrow. Maybe I'll uh -oh, act it one uh -oh, day. So uh -oh. Seize the day. Off Seize the day, Jada. <laughs> Here we are. No, I mean, I mean, it's that's a great question. Congratulations on wanting to write and starting writing and having fun with it. Um, you, the question and you're you ask a big about, inspiration to me. I love your writing. Well, thank you, thank you. The tricky thing about asking me about a, a, a going to a program, you know, writing program is uh, that I didn't go to a writing program, so ah, you know what I mean. I just learned to write like just by writing. But I know that a lot of people do uh, value writing programs, and and there are a lot of really cool writing programs out there. So I mean, these days you can depending on where you live and all that you HB. So maybe you live in New York. I don't know, but Harlem. 
Harlem. Okay, well, there are a lot of wonderful writing programs in the city. There's the Gotham Writers Workshop, I think it's called, and stuff, that stuff. But with this going on, you could probably very happily be very happy taking a writing class online. You know, um, I don't know any, I mean, I, I teach at NYU, but, you know, um, we're just doing online right now. Everybody's doing online. There's some great writing classes that you can teach online. I mean, that you can take online. I would just check out some online writing classes. Have you done, you've probably done some research. Yeah, I've done some research, but I strong, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I, <laughs> I really do think I'm good. <laughs> like in terms of like the, 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 the character just coming out of me, it's just, if this flows out so much, I hear the questions and I hear people here talking about writer's block. It's just, I think it comes from all of my experiences. Um, like I'm writing from my gut, I'm writing from people that I know, my childhood, every single thing. and. And oftentimes when I'm really trying to focus on acting, like I uh -huh. wake up, I hear a character. I'm on the train, I hear a character. I'm in the bathroom, I hear a character. Like constantly, I'm like, you know what? Just let me start writing and just writing some things down, but let me just do it in a formal way like I did acting. Um, when, I, when I wanted to act, I just graduated. I, I went to Esper. I went to the actor's studio. I went to all these places to understand character, um, analyzing the script. And that's why I fell in the love of like characters and understanding, understanding people, that the subtext of what the words are actually really saying. I hear you, I hear that. you. So, yeah. but if you're looking, but um, so back to your question, if you're looking for a program, I mean, I think that if you, if you want a program, there are programs right now that are online that you could take and it, they'd probably be a lot of fun. And like, even if you are good and great, there's always something to learn, especially if you wanna learn things like structure. If you wanna have a community, they probably have writers, you know, groups there that you could read your work to every week or something like that. That could be really great. You That's could do that idea. online, you know? It would be great to sort of, you probably have a really delicious acting community and you probably would, would be uh, well served by developing a community of writers who could share feedback and, and stuff like that. Um, but the, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of writing pro cool writing programs out there, especially these days. Thank you so much. I appreciate this so much. I, it means a lot to me that you took the time out to do this. It really means a lot because I was literally going crazy in this house when I stumbled upon this. I'm like, oh my god, this is so dope. Thank you, and I wish you guys all safe. Thanks, Jada. Um, all right, the next we have person we have is Kenya. Kenya, are you on hey. YouTube? Hey. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Thanks for doing this. Um, my question is, I think sort of simple, but um, I know like when you, in your plays, you work really well with um, spacing of the characters in their dialogue. Do you think that um, it's more effective to, when you're writing to put beat or to put the character's name and then put the lines, like if it's a, like if they're not saying anything and you want it to be like a dramatic pause. Cause I know some, some directors, I think they say, well, like kind of ignore the beats or the pauses, but in fact, what, which do you think is better? Oh, well, um, I mean, I sort of make it, look on the page however I want, you know, so, okay. you, know, you know, I just, you know, if, if I think um, it should be a, if, if I wanted to write the word beat, I'd write the word beat. If I wanted to write the word pause, I'd write the word pause. Um, Harold Pinter, the great writer, Harold Pinter, I think uses pause a lot. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, um, to great effect. Um, I created these six called spells, which are sort of my own creation that I just started doing because I like the way they looked on the page and okay. they created an interesting vibe in the room, but that's just something that's good for my work. I don't suggest that anybody follow that. I think there are uh, beat, pause is perfectly fine. If a director wants to ignore the beat or the pause, fine, let her ignore the beat or the pause. She might have a better idea. She might not. And when she don't, then you can go, hey, all right. Um, <laughs> I wrote a pause there for a reason. You know, okay. I mean, some directors, yeah. they love to say, the first thing I do when I pick up a script is I cross out all the stage oh. directions. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay. If that's what you need to feel good, um, 
right mm. you know so so I, I i would just write write beat or pause you know if if, if that works for you uh, but we can't safeguard it from some director doing what she or he they want to do with it especially if they're doing it in a country or a town that you're never going to visit you know mm. right let it go <laughs> that's the hardest thing yeah yeah but have, fun, but have fun writing you know what i mean yeah have a good time writing it right okay that's the main thing right yeah thank you thank you kenya kenya thank you so much all right we've got about six minutes left just to plug um and the next person we've got is rebecca rebecca are you unmuted yes i think so hi um, so my question, and now I'm scared because of outlining, <laughs> um, but thanks, thank you so much for this um, opportunity. I've uh, made a huge stride in my artistic practice just in the last week in terms of being able to write every single day. Um, and my question is, I just started writing on the page since last Wednesday, since I joined the first one here, and this play is just happening. Um, and I've gotten to a point, I got it to a point today where the words were coming, but my brain was saying, I don't like this, but it was coming. So I just let it keep flowing. What do you do um, if you hit a point in your writing where it, it seems like it wants to go in a direction, but your other side of your brain is saying, I don't know if I like this. I hope that makes sense. It does. It does, it does, it does, make, it does make sense. Make I sometimes I often wonder what, where that, I don't like this voice comes from. I don't like this. You know what I mean? Is it, I, and I was thinking about it today, is it the snarky part of ourselves that we, we most often direct toward others? I don't like her. Look at what she's wearing. Who does she think she is being with Justin Lincoln Lincoln? <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? The shit that we spew mm -hmm. either audibly or inaudibly on a daily basis to who you name it, right? So that's the shit comes home to roost and there we are it's backed up in our own head <laughs> vomiting onto into our beautiful thing that we're making <laughs> right because we got something good going and the shit that we ordinarily say for those people out there it's going to try to piss in the beautiful thing that you're creating right mm -hmm. so if somebody were to come up to you and go I, who do you think you are wearing that gray sweater? I mean, you, got, you have a gray sweater on. You know what I mean? What would you? I mean, it's like some. It's it, it's either in New York. I live in New York. Okay, where do you live, Rebecca? I, I usually live in New York. I'm quarantined in Alabama right now. But okay. Oh, oh well. Okay. Okay. Well, there are probably crazy people maybe in Alabama also. You know, <laughs> and um, so if some crazy person walk up, you go, "Who do you think you are walking down the street?" Right? You probably just keep walking, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, would you engage? We try to engage sometimes. Sometimes I try to engage. I tell, well, excuse me, ma'am. I have a right to be, you know, pu pu wrong. <laughs> just keep walking. It's just like, ooh, talk to the hand. But you don't even have to hold your hand up, Rebecca. It's mm -hmm. some crazy bitch that's talking to you, trying to throw you off your game. Don't engage. Okay. Keep walking. Like, <laughs> I don't know. You see what I mean? Yeah, it, that's all it is. That's the crazy bitch side of yourself. Excuse me, I'm not calling you a name. That's the crazy <laughs> side of yourself that is just vomiting up into your pretty nice, gorgeous shit that you've been making since Wednesday. And who are they to tell you that you shouldn't be writing? What, right? Mm -hmm. And we all have that part of ourselves. Oh yeah, and they just sit around with the judgy part, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can talk, you can, you know, you can just keep walking. You can confront them and turn and yell at them, but that would be kind of like yelling at a, at a, at a, a you know, a, a challenged, a, a, an emotionally challenged person who confronted you on the street. The best thing to do is just keep walking. That makes sense. Right. Don't, don't give them any energy. Don't engage with them. Don't try to convince them that you're doing something that you've always wanted to do. Now I'm curious, does that also apply? Like, I feel like these two characters that have been coming to me, they they have a life experience that I don't have. Um, and I'm just curious if like I engage in that part yet or if I 
if I just keep writing and then at the end, maybe it just exists, it just exists to exist and that is what it is. Or do I engage in that conversation too? So you said, hold on, you said you have a, these two characters you have, say that again, because it, it's- I have a life experience that I don't have. So the, so far the, these characters are speaking to me. One of them is struggling with addiction and it's not a life experience that I share. So I feel like that other judgmental part of me is saying like, do I have a right to even- Do you have a right to even? even? No. <laughs> I'll tell you something. So there's a song called Angel from Montgomery. And the lyrics are, uh, the lyrics are, I am, a, I am an old woman named after my mother, right? So the writer of that great song, whose name is John Prine, died yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he, was, he was 70 something, but he's a great writer. And he died yesterday because he got the virus and he died. There was an interview when someone asked him years ago, you're a man, yo. I mean, you know, right? He identifies as a man. He's a dude. You wrote a song that said, I am an old woman named after my mother. And that's how his song started. And he said, they said, why did you even think to do that? What, who told you that you could do that? And he said, no one ever told me I couldn't. And I was like, that's beautiful. We got so many rules in our heads about you're only supposed to write about the We got a lot of rules. We got a lot of rules because a lot of us sometimes just go and write whatever the fuck with no respect for the experience of the people that we're writing about. So the rule comes into place to keep those of us who are not specific, sensitive, who don't have any skin in the game from just writing stuff. Right, so those rules are in place for a reason, but the problem is when some of us with open hearts and honest feelings want to write about someone's experience who isn't exactly like our own, top dog, underdog, two men in a room. I'm not a man. I don't identify as a man. I wrote it. No one told me I wasn't allowed to do that. People have since told me that I shouldn't have done it because I wasn't allowed to, but I thought, yo, I already did it. <laughs> right? <laughs> But, but we have to remember those rules are in place for a reason. But if we come to the work with an open heart and a deep respect for the life story that is not specifically our own, then I believe that that deep respect, we, through that deep respect and that deep reverence uh, and, that, and the work we, that we engage in in the creative process, we can earn the right to tell that story. Okay, and we earn it by doing it. You don't have to sit around now, Rebecca, for the next three weeks trying to earn the right to do it. You earn it by doing the work and being open and honest about what you don't know, what you do know, what you'd like to know, you know, just, just do the work. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So again, but think of John Prine today. The song is called Angel from Montgomery. And mm -hmm. it's amazing. When you, when you hear it, you think, a man wrote that. It's a stunning song. I am an old woman named after my mother. Mm -hmm. No one told him he wasn't allowed to write that. Right? Yeah. He wrote a lot of other great songs too. Bless his heart. Thank you. That's so helpful. I'll just tell Thank the you. little bitch to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There you, go. there you go. Don't give her too much energy though. She's an energy vampire. Remember that. Okay? Don't give Thank her too you. much energy. Thank, Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. All right. It's 6.03. Okay, we should, we should, we should go. We should do it again tomorrow. We should um, do it again tomorrow. We'll be here. We'll be go. here. So just a go quick go. reminder, um, if you go to publictheater.org to sign up by 3 p.m. each day and I email out the link between 3 and 4.30 and we'll, we'll, we'll see you, we'll see you then.